good morning students today we are coming to learn about visual fields what are visual fields visual fields are what you find in front of you how far do you see with your eyes anything which you cannot see is marked as dark area and those places you can see are bright areas so areas you cannot see we call them anopia all right and visual fields divide the word the term into two visual is what you see okay and field is what is in front of you so all areas which you can see in front of you without turning your head becomes what your visual fields okay so when you hear anopia anopia means you cannot see anything from that particular eye okay congruous means the same portion is affected in each eye homonymous means same side you spoken about with brown's name before which are fibers that after entering into the chiasma they sweep to the contralateral optic nerve inferonasally and then come back when you hear quadrant anopia, it means a quarter of the field is affected. And of course, hemianopia means half of the field. So, as we learned about it in the previous class, when you see visual fields, so as I said, the dark zones are called scotoma or anopia, okay? The dark zones are called scotoma. They are areas where you cannot see from. Okay, so look at this particular picture. It does not respect the horizontal. All right, this one does not really respect the horizontal. This one doesn't respect neither the horizontal nor the vertical. It moves across. So these are typical of retinal problems where the ganglion cells are found. And those are typical in glaucoma. Okay, so that is it. In glaucoma, visual field is said that it does not respect neither the vertical nor the horizontal meridian. So look at it, it starts like this, scotoma here, scotoma there. It becomes bigger and then continues widening. And then at the time, a point in time, you have what you call tunnel vision. Like you are looking through a tunnel and it's only the central portion where you see. Call the manual glaucoma and then you see that the eye is blind at this so this is complete anopia so this is about retina problems okay where the fibers don't respect the vertical nor the horizontal okay so in the end that is visual field that you can see in glaucoma patients so let us learn about a few visual fields in the visual pathway in this particular picture all right so as you can see this will be your right eye here and here will be your left eye all right so you have the right optic nerve and that's the left optic nerve where they join together to form the chiasma all right so when you look at the picture critically you should know how to call them their nomenclature and after that find out where the lesion is found okay so this is your chiasma if that is your chiasma this place will be optic tract all right and then it continues at the back there so look at the picture here okay the scenario here this is the left eye and that's your right eye so in the left eye, the person can see very well without any problem. That is why it is white. But in the right eye, we call it anopia because it's dark completely. Total darkness is what? Anopia. What it means is that the right optic nerve is totally damaged. That is why the person cannot see from the right eye. So we call it anopia or anopsia. Okay. Let's go to the second scenario here. Okay. So, when the will brown knee fibers are affected, so we are at the 
at the right side okay there's something to remember about visual field take the field as your own eye if these were your eyes of course this is your left eye and that is your right eye okay interpret it as your own eye so for example in the second scenario okay your right eye is totally gone it's not seen but in the left eye you should remember that it is the superior temporal portion where the problem is and the person cannot see from that angle all right before I continue, remember that the retina is organized in such a way that your superior retina you use it to look at things that are inferior and vice versa. In that same manner, you use your nasal retina to look at things at the temporal fields and then your temporal retina to look at things at the nasal fields. Okay, I repeat. The retina is organized so that superior retina helps you to see fields at the inferior okay inferior retina helps you to see superior fields all right field is what is outside and what is in front of you your temporal retina helps you to see fields that are nasal and your nasal retina helps you to see the temporal fields okay so let's talk about we brown knee fibers okay that's number two here all right so remember the right optic nerve is totally damaged that is why there is complete anopia okay but remember that the vibrant need fibers they are fibers the infronasal fibers okay that cross to the contralateral side and then sweep back to the chiasma so if infronasal infronasa fibers are affected it means that it's superotemporal fields that be what projected and affected. So we call it what junctional scotoma or junctional syndrome, whereby there's complete anopia because the right optic nerve is totally gone. But its fibers, which are the rebrowning fibers that swept infronasally to the contralateral optic nerve, infronasally here means that. They are felt to be supratemporal. That is why in the left eye it is a supratemporal field which has been affected. Alright. Now let's go to the chiasma. This is your optic chiasma. Alright. So lesions at the optic chiasma typ typically give you what you call bitemporal hemianopia. Hemianopia because it's half which is affected. Half. But both are temporal, okay? Is it not temporal? If you take your left eye, is it not temporal side? Yes. And if you take your right eye, this is a temporal side. The person has what? By temporal hemianopia, all right? Why? Because it's the nasal fibers that cross at the chiasma. So, if the nasal retina is affected, it projects into the temporal field so the temporal field which will have, have what hemianopia likewise in the left eye is the temporal field that's why it have what by temporal hemianopia all right so this is typical of an optic chiasma which is centrally located within the 80 percent population and if you see junctional syndrome or junctional scotoma, it means that the optic chiasma is what? Prefixed. It's prefixed. 10% of the population which it is prefixed. Whereby it has um, the, the optic nerve in one eye is compressed and then the contralateral eye it is the infronasal fibers that are what be what compressed so this is prefixed this is a centrally located one and this particular scenario gives a picture of optic chiasma that is what prefixed okay prefixed so this is post fixed all right post fixed chiasma and this is what pre fixed 
why do I say that? There is macular representation at the level of the optic chiasma. Alright? So, once the chiasma is what? Prefixed, it is the posterior part which will be what? Compressed. And that is why it's the central portion, the center of your retina. That's where you have the macula. And the macula has been affected by temporally. So we have what? Central bitemporal hemianopia. That's the name of this. Central bitemporal hemianopia. This is bitemporal hemianopia. It looks similar like this, but this is central. Okay? So whenever you hear central bitemporal hemianopia, it means it's the macula that has been affected uh, halfway in HI. So let's move on. So that is number four, okay? The posterior portion of the chiasma which has been what? affected. So let's move on to number five, okay? Look at number five here, where the optic tract is found. If you are asked to, des to describe this visual field defect, so we say right homonymous, okay? Because it's the left optic tract which has been affected. The left optic tract is what? affected so the visual flow defect will be where on your right side so you have what right homonymous okay right because the flows defects are at the right side okay homonymous mean same side okay incongruous yes incongruous because the number of of fibers that have been affected is not the same. In the right eye, more fibers have been affected than the left eye. They are not the same. That is why it's what? Incongruous. Okay? So, it's what? Right, because it's at the right side, in the right side. Homonymous means same side. Okay? Incongruous, because different amount of fibers are affected. Hemianopia. And these are characteristics of what? Optic tract lesion. Why should it be incongruous? It's very simple. It is because in an optic tract lesion, you have more fibers nasally coming from the contralateral right eye. Okay? More nasal fibers, 52%. That is why more damage is found here in the right side than the left. Because in the left eye, is only the temporal fibers we constitute just about 48 percent that have been what affected that is why it becomes what incongruous so this is typical of what junctional scotoma in which case you have what a post fixed chiasma okay a post fixed chiasma whereby in the left eye, the lesion has completely destroyed the site in the left eye. But in the right eye, the infranasal fibers have been affected, projecting as what supratemporal fibers here. So this is called what junctional scotoma or junctional syndrome. This is what you find in practical terms when you do the test. Junctional scotoma. Let's learn more about visual fields uh, in comparison with the visual pathway. Okay, so here, what do we have here? Good, let's follow. Mm -hmm. Take the lesions are being in the left eye, for example. In this particular picture, okay, the whole left eye, there's no vision there, so there's complete left an uh, anopia complete left anopia here okay the whole nerve is damaged but the right eye the person can see through it is that right very good so let's go to the second scenario all right where the lesion is found at the level of the optic chiasma okay so remember that the chiasma receives the cassating fibers from nasal portion and nasal fibers from 
the nerve help you to project the temporal fields okay the same way this area so chiasma lesions give you what by temporal hemianopia by temporal hemianopia very good so let's continue here in this particular scenario okay it is this optic tract the left optic tract which has been what affected left optic tract is what affected so it means that the type of scotoma or anopia that's going to give you will be at the at the right side okay so there's a left optic tract to the lesion to give you reward right homonymous hemianopia okay yes right homonymous hemianopia is that right that's great typically optic tract lesions will give you incongruent lesions so the full name will be what right homonymous incongruous hemianopia why right because the lesions are found at the right side okay uh -huh. homonymous it means what same side in the left eye is the right side in the right eye is the right side it's going to be incongruous because the nasal fibers are more okay so it's supposed to be incongruous so more lesions found in the right side okay all right so that's the optic tract lesion mm -hmm. let's move on to more lesions here let's come here so these are what optic radiations okay optic what radiations so still so we are at the left side so here we see that the superior left optic radiations have been affected superior left optic radiations have been what affected so far they are superior it means they are traversing through the parietal loop okay so if they are superior it means the visual field defect to be what inferior and if the organic lesion is at the left it means the visual field defect will be at the right side so what do we have here so we have right homonymous congruous inferior quadrantanopia i repeat right because both are the right side homonymous means same side if you take the left eye it is the right side is affected if you take the right eye it's the right side so that's why it's homonymous okay is it congruous yes it's congruous because it's the same amount of lesion which is found here at the level of the optic radiations all lesions there are congruous okay all right so why is it quadrantanopia because it's a quarter of a circle which has been what affected all right if it's inferior of course the lesions are from lower at the lower side so full name is what right inferior homonymous congruous quadrantanopia so if you want to trace the organic lesion of course it will be at the left okay because everything is opposite the organic lesion will be at the left now if the scotoma is inferior it means the organic lesion is what superior okay so if the visual field defect is the right side it means organic lesion is at the left if the visual field defect is inferior it means organic lesion is superior okay so what it means is that is the superior is the left superior optic radiations 
which have been what affected the left superior optic radiations they pass through the left parental lobe of the brain so similarly follow the same thing and realize that this is what right superior congruous quadrantanopia homonymous okay right superior homonymous congruous quadrantanopia what does it mean it means that one the lesion is found at the left side two the lesion is inferior okay so if it's at the left and inferior most likely you are dealing with what temporal lobe so left temporal lobe lesion is that right so that is it when you have quadrantic lesion like this so this one you can call it pi on the floor when you hear pi on the floor it means you are talking about what superior optic radiation lesions you hear pi in the sky it means you are talking about what inferior optic radiation lesion and i told you that when it comes to the visual cortex which are at the occipital lobe the macula is generally spread because of dual blood supply from posterior cerebral arteries and the middle cerebral artery if one shuts down the other will work so generally the macula is spread okay so how do you differentiate them assuming that the patient has both left upper and lower optic radiations affected the visual field effect to be where right homonymous congruous hemianopia if it's both the superior and inferior optic radiations okay but the difference will be that at the center macula is affected if the optic radiations but if it's a occipital lobe which is affected both the upper and lower bank it will always pair the what the macula so here you have right homonymous congruous macula sparing hemi anopia what this means is that it's a visual cortex problem affecting what the upper and lower bank of the occipital lobe of the brain okay so you can try this how do you call it this will be right superior okay to be right right take it as your own eye okay uh-huh but this is your left eye and that will be your right eye so if this is your left eye it is the right side of your left eye which is affected and this is your right eye it is to the right side of your right eye which has what you what affected is it a quarter yes it's a quarter of it so therefore think about quadrantanopia all right is it right sided yes it means homonymous is it superior yes okay so how do you call it this will be right superior homonymous congruous quadrantanopia also known as what pi in the sky pi in the sky but always describe it because you can also have pi in the sky which is superior left what quadrantanopia so every time describe it okay so who can describe this of course this is going to be what right homonymous congruous macular sparing superior quadrantanopia macular sparing because the center here look the macula is not involved okay so this tells you that there is visual cortex problem at the occipital lobe all right but which bank of the occipital lobe is affected is it upper or lower bank the organic lesion is going to be the lower bank but at the left side so the left the fibers that are found at the left lower bank 
adocipital cortex. Okay, projecting as what right congruous superior macular sparing quadrantanopia. Okay, so the difference between this and that of organic lesions happening as at left inferior optic radiations. Okay, is that the left inferior optic radiations they traverse to the temporal lobe of the brain, so it's dorsipital, and those ones the macula will be affected. So you have straight line here, dark like this, joining this macula will be what affected. So once you see this, it means visual cortex occipital low lesion. So again, this is your left eye, that is your right eye. So it means that both the lower and upper bank or the occipital lobe has been what affected, but where at the right side. The right, upper, and lower uh, banks have been what affected at the occipital lobe. That is why it's giving you left homonymous macular sparing congruous hemianopia. Okay, it means the lesion one is at the right occipital loop or the right occipital cortex. Number two. The upper and lower banks of the occipital lobe fibers have what have what been affected. That is why it's a full half. Okay, is it congruous? Yes, it's congruous because similar amount of fibers have been affected. Right. Similarly, this will be what left homonymous incongruous macular sparing hemianopia. Okay. Incongruous because it's the similar amount of fibers that have been what affected. Okay, so the legion so it is what left is at the left side, homonymous, incongruous, okay, macular sparing hemianopia. It means that the lesion is at the right occipital loop. Okay, so this will be what left homonymous congruous macular sparing hemianopia it means the lesion is at the right occipital lobe okay so now look at these other visual for defects okay remember let's go one by one so at this particular area there's still a junctional scotoma why because there's anopia here okay at the left eye and in the right eye you have suprotemporal fibers being affected it means the inframasal fibers okay with brand new fibers have been affected so you have junctional scotoma is that right so this means that the chiasma has been what? Post fixed. It's post fixed chiasma. Let's look at this particular example. This is a typical case of bitemporal hemianopia where the lesion is found at where the optic chiasma. Okay? Bitemporal hemianopia, optic chiasma. Let's continue. At this particular stage, okay you have the optic tracts being affected all right so the left optic tract is what affected if the left optic tract is affected it will give you the visual field to the right side okay will it be congruous no it will be incongruous because 52 percent of fibers came from the right eye only 48 came from the left eye so you cannot have the same amount of lesion so you have bigger lesion coming from the right eye okay where 52 percent is coming from so how do you call this lesion it will be what are they found at the right side in the right eye yes 
at the left eye yes is it found the right side of the right eye yes so to be what right mm, homonymous because same side right side right side incongruous because the quant quantum of fibers affected is not the same okay hemi anopia all right so that is it mm -hmm. this is typical of optic tract lesions okay now let's talk about optic radiations here eh? so if you have the inferior left optic radiations being affected inferior left optic radiations being affected that means that we are talking about the temporal lobe the left temporal lobe being affected it will project one in the right side visual in the right visual field yes would it be superior field loss yes to be superior because the inferior fibers are what being affected okay so will it be congruous generally it should be congruous should be congruous generally okay so how do you call this particular lesion this is right okay because if you take the left eye the lesion is found in the right side you take the right eye to the lesion is found in the right side so to what right homonymous okay congruous okay in this case i'll call it quadrantanopia okay so right homonymous congruous quadrantanopia it means that the lesion is found one at the left side okay if the visual field is superior it means that the lesion is found inferiorly so left side inferiorly so left inferior optic radiations where are they found at the what temporal lobe so temporal lobe lesion that is the type of lesion type of visual field defect it will give you now there's something interesting you should also know sometimes it's just one portion of the chiasma which is affected we call it what hemichiasma defect hemichiasma defect okay look at this box here what does it mean it means that fibers that are coming from the right eye the optic nerve is gone that's why you have complete anopia in the right eye but the left eye the fibers that are here are nasal fibers brought from the left eye and never fibers here how would they project they project temporarily that's why the temporal field here is gone so this type of lesion you, you got it what you call it hemichiasma defect hemichiasma defect it means that one half of the chiasma has been what affected so it means that you have one full anopia plus contralateral temporal hemianopia it means there's what hemichiasma defect okay let's look at this particular uh visual field loss sometimes you have a patient who has a prefixed chiasma prefixed chiasma okay at the posterior portion of the chiasma you have macular representation over there okay there are macular representation at the posterior portion of the chiasma it means if there is any lesion that compresses that area it will affect what the macula so because it's at the chiasma it will give you by temporal lesion but basically it is affecting the posterior edge where the macula is found so it will give you what by temporal central hemianopia okay by temporal because the temporal field that affected temporal field okay by temporal okay central hemianopia okay let's continue in this particular scenario this is called the lateral geniculate nucleus okay lateral 
geniculate nucleus. If you have any lesion there, okay, it will give you what we call sectoranopia. Sectoranopia. Look at it very well. Okay, so if the organic lesion is found at the right, it means the visual field defect will be at the left. Okay, so here you are. So, if it's the upper part of the lateral nucleate nucleus which is affected, it means that the lesion will be what? Inferior. So, what do you have here? So, you have what? Left homonymous, as you call it, inferior, or you can call it horizontal sectoranopia. Okay? It means there is the lesion at where the lateral the nucleate nucleus. Then let's look at optic radiations here to the right side. Okay, if the upper optic radiations to the right side are affected, it means the visual field defect one, the we are the left two, and then lower side, and they will also affect the macula. So what do you have? You have left inferior. Homonymous congruous quadrantanopia. Left inferior homonymous congruous quadrantanopia. Okay? What does it mean? It means that the lesion is found superiorly at where the superior optic radiation passes through what? The parietal loop. Okay? So the lesion is at the right parietal lobe. So that is it. Mm? The visual fields, it continues like that. Let's also draw attention to this particular one. Okay? In this particular scenario, take it as your own eyes. Okay? And I want to tell you that this is your left eye. So if the left eye is not seen, it means there's left anopia. It means the right eye is seen. Look at the second scenario. Okay? The left eye is totally gone. It's not seeing anything. But half of the right eye is what? Seen. Okay? So you call it what? Hemichiasma syndrome or hemichiasma lesion. Okay? So, that is what I told you about in the other picture, hemichiasma lesion. So, you can have, let's say, this part, okay, half of the chiasma being what? Affected, alright? So, the whole left eye, the nerve is damaged. So, that's why you have this complete anopia here, alright? But in the right eye, the nasal fibers that are decassating at the level of the chiasm have been affected. Nasal fibers, they project temporally. That is why it's the temporal flow, which is what? Affected. So you have what? Hemichiasma lesion or syndrome or visual flow loss here. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at number three here. If you have a centrally placed optic chiasma, then you have what? Bitemporal hemianopia. Bitemporal hemianopia. Why? Because at the level of the chiasma, chiasma receives nasal fibers from each nerve. Nasal fibers from each nerve. Nasal fibers they project temporarily. Nasal fibers project temporarily. Okay? So you have what? Bitemporal hemianopia. That is what you have here. Okay? So, sometimes you can have binasal hemianopia. Okay? You can have binasal hemianopia. That is, if it's only the uncrossed fibers, the temporal uncrossed fibers that are affected, then you have binasal what? Hemianopia at the chiasma area. Why? Because... The temporal fibers here will project nasally 
and the temporal rest here will work project nasally so you have what binasal hemianopia is that right okay now let's look at another scenario here okay where we are talking about optic tract lesion so this particular lesion this particular visual field hmm? who can name it it is right homonymous congruous hemianopia right homonymous congruous hemianopia it means that the lesion has affected an area of the optic tract which is closer to lateral geniculate nucleus okay if it were not closer there it the lesion will be what incongruous okay all right so let's look at this particular scenario here okay you can call this word pie in the sky so by just looking at it we realize that the lesion should be at the left okay it should be at the left because the visual field defect is at the right it will not just be at the left but to be at the inferior part because the visual field defect is superiorly located what does it mean is the macula involved yes it means we are talking about what left inferior optic radiation left inferior optic radiation where do they pass they pass through the left temporal lobe of the brain okay so what is the name of this particular lesion it is what right homonymous superior congruous quadrantanopia or pi in the sky it means that is what the left temporal loop of the brain which has been what, affected similarly this will tell that is what it is the left okay superior loop of the brain superior uh the, the parietal loop okay is the left parietal loop of the brain which has been what affected because is the superior optic radiations which have been what affected okay so this is what right congruous inferior quadrantanopia also known as what high on the floor okay at the same time if you have both upper and lower optic radiations being affected then you have full hemifield as visual field defect so in this case the lesion will be where it will be at the left optic radiations both upper and lower fibers have been what affected so we have left optic radiation including both upper and lower optic radiation being what affected giving you what right homonymous congruous hemianopia okay when it is incongruous then you think about what around this part of the optic tract a bit away from the lateral genicular nucleus but if it's closer lateral genicular nucleus then it can give you what congruous lesions okay and if it's upper and lower optic radiations too it will still give you what congruous lesions now if you see this particular scenario here whereby we have what right homonymous congruous macular sparing hemianopia it means the occipital lobe has been what affected it is both the upper and lower bank of the occipital lobe which has been what affected in this case it will be the left side because it's the right visual field which has what been affected okay so similarly 
if you look at this particular scenario, if you see all the central part that's been affected, it means the macula is what? Involved. So basically, it is what? Right homonymous central congruous hemianopia. Right homonymous central congruous hemianopia. What does it mean? It means that the lesion is one at the left side two at the occipital lobe okay three it has affected the macular fibers okay and at the concurrent fissure or occipital cortex okay so that is what you should know so students at the juncture I want to tell you that if you continue learning, visual field defects are a bit difficult. You need to be analytical. You need to understand it. Learn it well. And if you have any questions, you may keep them. And you may ask me these questions whilst we meet in class. And until I meet you again, stay focused and we will discuss more. Thank you for your time.